welcome to uh, my session uh, and uh, thankful to uh, Professor Sunil ji, uh, with whom I have a very long association. Uh, he's, he has been very kind and benevolent to always invite me in his all his training programs. Uh, and I try to give my best so that uh, he does not remove me from his <laughs> list of <laughs> panelists. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, 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 thank you for uh, kind words, uh, Professor. Uh, now you must be wondering that uh, we have uh, just started with the concept of uh, project management and uh, how come uh, uh, a session on monitoring and control of project. Uh, uh, friends, I will I will like to give you uh, two instances uh, for this. Uh, please remember that uh, uh, in a project, there are three ways to evaluate a project. One is very commonly used which is known as a feed forward control that means also known as a premise control that before you initiate an activity you try to find out where you can possibly go wrong and avoid those pitfalls that is a typical japanese strategy of continuous improvement known as kaiser right so a uh, whole of my presentation will be based upon uh, that Kaizen principle of feed forward control that before you initiate an activity, try to find out what can possibly go wrong and try to fix them so that you don't face that problem. So that that's that's a typical, typical mindset of the Japanese uh, methodology. <clears throat> Second methodology is that of the European style. Right? That is known as a concurrent control. Right? Activity goes on. You try to find out where you are wrong and you try to mend the ways on that spot, right? For example, you are going from Chandigarh to Delhi and all of a sudden near Ambala, your bus uh, breaks down. So you take a alternate uh, transportation mode. Now that's a, that's known as a concurrent control. So in feed forward control, you premise that these are the possible black spots where things can go wrong. So I will try to avoid those, those wrong things. Concurrent control, the European style says that nine out of 10 times things will not go wrong. So if things go wrong, we will fix up at that spot itself. So your response time has to be very quick in, in a European style. <clears throat> and then there is a Western style, the typical style of uh, Peter Drucker which says feedback control. You pick up any book of Peter Drucker, you pick up any book of Gregor Ensoff, pick up any material of uh, Acre, you will always find the term used is feedback. That event has elapsed, everything is over. Try to find out what went wrong so that in your subsequent cycle, in your subsequent technique, you avoid those pitfalls. So I'm not saying which is better, please, please. It, it, is, it is purely based on the numbers, right? That is why the Japanese gave the concept of Six Sigma, right? Japanese gave the concept of Osho, right? That you try to find out, gave the, gave the concept of Sero, S-E-I-R-O, right? Gave the concept of 5S, right? What are these? These are all feed forward control techniques. So uh, it, it's slightly heavy topic. So uh, what I will do is uh, in the first half, I will try to link these concepts with the Indian philosophy, Indian methodology, Indian way of doing the things. And I'm please remember, uh, I'm, I'm not talking of the current 100 years or 50 years or 200 years. I'll be I've not started with my presentation, Manisha, wait. Mm. Uh, I I will go back 500 years, 1000 years and tell you how we have been able to manage the presentation. Uh, we have been able to manage our projects long, long back before even any textbook was possibly written on project management. So that is the whole uh, uh, proposal. Now, take this. The Kalash Temple at Elora. Just look at this photograph. It is inverted triangle, inverted triangle. The, the base is very small as compared to what is at the top. So it is 
it's top down it's in the form of a chariot right now and it is estimated that it may be more than more than 30000 tons single stone now grinding it pillaring it giving a all weather coating must be almost impossible even in today's time take another this is an inside of it Manakshi Amma temple at Madurai if you if you look at this photograph it appears to be a simple photograph of a temple do you know almost 1.5 kilometers away from this temple a big dug was done and an horizontal slope was created so as to reach 212 meters high temple and these stones were pulled by at least 200 to 300 elephants so you needed to create that slope so that these stones could be carried from the ground 212 kilometers now 212 meters now that is the beauty of a project management and it is estimated that in the uh, minakshi amma temple it took six years and almost twenty thousand people to build this temple marvels no textbook will teach you such things look at this c14 sindhu Dorg. there for almost now 1100 years you will say what is so great it is simply unbelievable why because it is at that time it was literally in the heart of the sea and please remember 1100 years is a huge time especially when the sea water is highly saline there has been almost negligible rusting of it even these stones when they come in contact with the chemicals they tend to decay nothing of that sort here so as a kya tha that something was known at 873 ad which chemicals were they using which technologies were they using I'm not into history, I'm not into the religion, but the very fact that mention of Pushpak Viman, holy scriptures, it cannot be a figment of imagination. Ram Setu, it cannot be a figment of imagination, especially when the NASA gives you a, a satellite image which says that yes, there could be a shorter version of linking India with Sri Lanka. So, what I am trying to highlight is, look at this musical pillar, the third temple in right, Hampi. There are twenty-one pillars in this. Each one of them gives you a different sound when it is honked, when it is touched. Can anybody possibly explain this? So how advanced was our technology at that time? And more important than that, how were those projects managed by us? That, that, that's a moot question. How are we managing that? There were no management classes at that time there were no project management consultants tools 
nothing was in black and white. And this Vital Temple in took almost seven years to build. Can anybody guess this? This is a typical courtyard where the kings used to issue sermons, orders. Sitting capacity ranging up to 3,000 to 4,000 people. The elder of that city used to come. And just look at this. There are in Harappa civilization, there are there are proofs which said that there was an underground sewerage system in the Harappan civilization. Sewerage system. Now, so now coming back to my with with this brief accolade about Indian culture and rich traditions which we have. We come to the basics. So what is the need of a control in a project? And are, are you, are, are my participants with me on this? Are, is, is this the methodology of doing the things okay? Please, any response, any any questions, please? Anything? Uh, I, I request you if, if we can have an interactive session rather than a monologue where I deliver a sermon and and you people listen. No, uh, because we all are, uh, I, I I think most of us are faculty members. So uh, so let's, let's have an interactive session. Anyway, uh, so uh, why control? Hmm? See, all of the projects are controlled by somebody. That somebody may be the financer, that somebody may be the owner, that somebody may be the manager. So he has to look at what are the costs involved and what are the possible benefits which will emerge to him or to his organization. And you cannot have a, an idea of how the project is performing unless unless and until unless and until we undertake its control and evaluation so control gets an important component of the total management process aapko uh, uh, you, you must have been uh, shared with uh, um, your your friends that uh, in the first session that management typically has seven functions. You have to undertake planning. You have to organize the resources. Now, please, please continue in my session. Also, look, continue to look at your chat box because I'll be doing some typing part there. Right. So you need to plan. You need to organize. You need to staff. You need to find out right kind of people for the right job. Uh, uh, you, uh, yes. Uh, you need to give them proper directions. You need to coordinate and control them. You have to record their performance. And then you have to budget for your next. So friends, this is in nutshell what management is all about. So if I'm managing a project, I have to look at these seven. So, so the component, individual component may vary. Individual component may vary. Now take, let's, let's, let's take the, take the example of some of most admired Indian companies. Have you noticed the Ola and Uber model? Very surprised. Ola and Uber do not own even a single cab. The owner of Uber's, uh, Uber brand says that I also book my cab. I don't own a car. I don't need. 
and they have a fleet of 7.5 lakh cars available to them hmm. wonderful business model now your question will be it is so simple i will also like to replicate no can anybody guess what is the success reason for success of ola and uber it is pure and simple project management it is nothing but scheduling 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 the things a car which is has not been hired for half an hour has lost this half an hour forever so inventory carrying cost is very high you understand inventory carrying cost is very high but your question will be i don't own anything so where is inventory the inventory you have passed it on to your supplier somebody will be posing me a question sir this is a case where services are being hired i differ take the case of maruti turn off 100 180 degree turn in case of ola and uber the brands do not own single car agreed but in case of maruti maruti owns 100% of the cars before they are sold so that means that means the model which is applicable for ola and uber should not work for maruti no same model operates they also have a zero inventory zero inventory what have they done they have tied up with their vendors and the vendors supply them the raw material on the spot when it is required for example my car is at semi assembly level it is being given the final shape i need rear mirror i need right crank shafts i need glasses i need right? upholstery and i know that 500 cars will be assembled in the morning in the manesar plant and they'll be needed around 1030 so they have tied up with the vendor who will supply them at around 1015 1020 10, this very material so kya kar rahe hain wo apna inventory carrying cost they are transferring it to the vendors so you don't need much security you don't need much lighting you don't need space and what are these vendors doing they are manufacturing taking into account what is the need for today this is the concept of efficiency the friends in in any business if i have to determine its performance i will not go into profitability i will not go into resource owned or used i will be using two concepts effectiveness and efficiency so effectiveness and efficiency are the two benchmarks 
for any project. Now, now you realize why, why uh, before even the concept of project management has been properly explained, I am giving you the concept of right project control. Because you cannot control the projects unless you know the nitty gritties of that control. So to determine benchmark of any project, you need to have effectiveness and efficiency. And related to it is the concept of re-engineering. So in nutshell, <coughs> all your projects need to be effective and efficient. Now, the question will be agitating you. Why effectiveness? If my product project is product is good, it will be lapped on. It will be taken by everybody. No. All projects have to be effective. Now let's let's take an example. Suppose you allocate one assignment to two groups, group A and B, whatever. A takes 70 days to complete a project. B takes 140 days to complete a project. So obviously we will say A is more effective. Why? Because it is closer to the targets. Suppose target was 100 days, A did it in 70 days. So we will say A is more effective because it utilized only 70% of the time and completed the project. And we will say that B is less effective because in fact, ineffective because it took more time to complete the project. Fine. Any questions till this stage? Okay. A team, A team spent two, oh, sorry, 210 rupees to complete the project. B team took 140, spent 140 rupees to complete the project. Understood? So what is the cost per unit? The first case, it is 1.2, sorry, 2.1. In the second case, it is 1. So please remember one golden rule. In a project, there may be effectiveness or no efficiency, or there may be efficiency and no effectiveness. A good tool for evaluating project control is both effectiveness and efficiency. And efficiency. I'm saying the word using the word focus is on and. Is it clear? So you, you, now you understood the the concept of effectiveness and efficiency. Any questions, please, friends? So, <coughs> so all my projects not only have to be effective, they also have to be efficient. Because it is the resource utilization which will determine whether your project is on right mode or not. Second concept I will like to. Now, some of you will be interested in knowing that 
Suppose this is my first project. How will I know whether I am effective or efficient? I don't have any standards. I have no standards. So I have no benchmarks. I have no way of knowing whether I'm right or wrong. Then what do we do? Friends, then there is a technique of benchmarking. Which I will do it later again, but at this moment, since I'm building up the momentum, so I'll explain the concept. <clears throat> See, uh, literally, benchmarking means comparison. Comparison against norms. Comparison against standards. Comparison against standards. Now, this standard could be another project of the same type. For example, I am developing a housing project, housing complex. I come to know that there are around expenses around 1500 rupees per square foot. Why? Because that, that has been the project of Sushma developers in Zirakpur. That has been the project of Minerva developers in Zirakpur. Right? Because they, they cost so much. So my focus will be on similar type. So what we have done is construction project with the construction project. Ke saath compare kar liya. Such type of comparison is known as convergent benchmarking. Convergent, similar. Convergent benchmarking. There may be a similar method. When the projects are not similar, there is no construction project available in my neighborhood, so I can't compare. But I know that particular road has been developed, particular airport has been developed in this area, a particular bus stand has been developed, and typically the cost of manufacturing is around, say, 1800. What have comparison, sir? I have compared not the same, but similar. And not the same, but it's similar. Such type of comparisons are the related benchmark. Related benchmark. Because I'm controlling through a method which is in a similar industry. Construction to hai, construction industry na, sir. Humne real estate project hi liya. Only thing is housing complex ke kharche kuch aur tarah ke honge. Road or BOT or airport ke or railway station ke kharche kuch aur tarah ke honge. But almost similar lines. And then there is the third type, which is known as divergent benchmark. Divergent. Divergent. Not related at all. Unrelated. Unrelated. No relationship at all with your existing line. So product is different, market is different, technology is different. Everything is different. It's a diversified project. Diversified. Take the case of Imperial Tobacco Company, ITC. They are into cigarettes, they are into sun drop refined oil, they are into ITC Welcome Group. 
अगर वो चाहे कि मैं अपने पुराने प्रोजेक्ट्स के साथ कंपेयर कर करना चाहूं तो कर नहीं पाएंगे बिकॉज देर है नो नो बेंच मार्क्स देन वट वी डू यू नीड टू कंपेयर अगेंस्ट दोज विच आर नॉट इन दी सेम लाइन I'll give you an example. There is large number of examples. I am sure you must have heard about an airline by the name of Royal Dutch Airlines. I don't know how true it is, but it is frequently quoted in textbooks. So I am giving you that example. Royal Dutch Airlines, small aircraft, small airlines, but considered to be the most effective and efficient organization. zero delays now please remember friends flight could get delayed for reasons beyond the control of an airline beyond the control of there could be no runway there could be no gasoline they said i want to be known as the most efficient airline what should i do you know what they did they picked up from pizza hut aap kahenge kya bhai kya relationship hai pizza hut aur airlines ka no relationship except that maybe you can order a pizza on an airline that's all that's the only relationship you could think of but not royal dutch airline they thought differently they said if a pizza delivery company could home deliver a pizza within 40 minutes why can't i run my flights on time so they said let us see what all phd does pizza home delivery what what do they do they said simple gimmick they said they will deliver the pizza within 40 minutes or 30 minutes whatever the time in case pizza gets delayed they will offer the pizza and refund the money एक आपने ब्रांडिंग बना ली ना जी अपनी एक आपने और बना लिया अपने आसपास दैट हेयर इज एन एयरलाइन विच अंडर प्रोमिस ओवर डिलीवर्स वंडरफुल लाइन अंडर प्रोमिस ओवर डिलीवर सो दे यूज द सेम मेथडोलॉजी इन देयर ओन एयरलाइन दे सेड ओके If the flight gets delayed for beyond ten percent or twenty percent of the scheduled time, we will refund back your tickets. In case flight flight gets delayed beyond a particular number, we will put you in the best possible hotel at location where you are stuck up. So, Chaya Ma'am or Tripti Ma'am, we, you, or me, like people, will pray that the flight gets delayed so that we get. we get a choices of treating treatment but if you just look at the concept it's a wonderful concept aur kahan se unhone lessons pick kiye they did not take example from virginia airways or from lufthansa or from cathay pacific no they picked up from a totally unrelated industry and you pick up any textbook you will find this example why because this is a classical case of divergent benchmark you don't have to be sherlock holmes to find it out you you will you will if you keep your ears and eyes open you will you will find such examples where companies have excelled by taking help from other industries any questions my friends any i have been doing most of the talking for last 45 minutes any questions you have anything you want to add yes please yes my organizers is there any uh, methodology where where we can make them uh, share their views or it has to be a monologue only Um, I request the participants to kindly respond to our expert. Oh, no, no. See, uh, uh, that that adds value to everybody. Uh, yes, sir. 
we i can continue talking for 5 hours that's not an issue i am a classical uh, yes jeevan jyoti ma'am ashmita ma'am any anybody will like to... anybody just wants to share his or her views it's okay it's okay uh, okay so yes, we sir. have jeevan jyoti ma'am yes yes ma'am good morning sir as uh, you have given a uh, very uh, great examples like uh, jirakpur because i am also from jirakpur as if i compare jirakpur because jirakpur is comparing with the chandigarh because nowadays people don't want to go chandigarh they actually all the facilities all the public amenities over there and uh, you know that the highways also developed and the, they actually uh, uh, taking a benchmark i think chandigarh because they think ki, uh, like jirakpur is is a, uh, now becoming a metro city in a coming future also so but problems are also there like a uh, traffic issues are there and uh, uh, congestion traffic now the road is uh, widening from both the from both the stretch near the mcd and the, all the areas i feel uh, there are a lot of housing projects as you have uh, mentioned the uh, uh, like shushma housing and all but maya gardens everywhere it's a, like a urban jungle it's kind of again they are actually creating a same like a chandigarh chandigarh height restrictions are there but in jirakpur they are for, uh, creating a huge structures around the road sides so a lot of disadvantages also when we are uh, supposing uh, and uh, i mean um, taking See, a benchmark of a chandigarh but still jirakpur is uh, thoda piche hai chandigarh se dekhiye ma'am uh, see uh, the uh, development uh, part yeah your point is well taken uh, see i i just gave the example of jirakpur yes, versus sir. chandigarh not for any other reason except that you have some standard to compare with yes sir. and my my comparison was only limited to the cost of construction yes sir uh, when when i say cost of a project obviously the land cost in some of the northern sectors will be certainly more than that my my limited purpose was that in a project whenever yeah. you want to compare something you first try to find out if there is similar data available yes, in sir. case it is available then your benchmarks are easier yes sir in so, case your yeah yeah as the two benchmark you are mentioning effectiveness and the efficiency so i think uh, jirakpur is a lack of uh, uh efficiency uh, see i will not uh, that's that's your view point uh, uh, uh see uh moving away from say zero code versus sure, sir, sir. comparison no like my, i just my, uh, uh, uh try to connect with your point benchmark yeah. like how we can uh, yeah, connect yeah with certainly, certainly, yes sir yes certainly. sir see uh abhi uh, you you have i think preempted what i wanted to say Uh, maybe uh, you have that um, um, telepathy so i say see uh, <laughs> i only use the word cost benefit analysis yes sir uh what you are highlighting is the social cost benefit analysis okay sir many a times a project may be economically viable economically viable but may have social ramifications social ramifications yes sir so that is fine you are doing well but are you adding value to the society correctly is profitability the only concern is cheap housing the only concern or is it also involving quality of life so when you benchmark yourself you try to do it against the sustainable development goals also of the united nations housing affordable housing is one of the objectives fine but related to it is also the environment consciousness related to it is also the availability of schools tertiary health care primary health care yes sir right you understand job opportunities all those things together constitute quality of life and this comes under the concept of 
social cost benefit analysis that that i will touch uh, later little little bit later say around 12 15 or so when when i go into the evaluation part but at this moment there is there is a uh, united nations development um, uh, industrial development organization guidelines also on on yes sir how to how to evaluate a project in case there are large number of people involved in it so that those are in the social cost benefit analysis project okay uh, if there are no more any any other comments please so what i am trying to highlight i am trying to highlight how will we deal with the measurement and correction in the performance i monitor i come to know x is not up to the mark whereas a b c d e f are on the mark so should i focus only on x or should i see whether this causal variable is because of a b c d e also although although the many the manifestation is only for x kai bar kya hota hai sir interrelated components hote hain for example i am having a stomach ache right is some issue in my stomach or it is a manifestation of some other problem i have a headache could be x number of things although manifested only as a headache that is criteria x you understand that is what i mean by measurement and correction of the performance why why should you do it because what is your ultimate objective friends your ultimate objective is to attain your organization goals and what are goals jaise maine shuru mein kaha goals are effectiveness and efficiency any questions my friends anybody is not clear on this okay fine fine so that is okay yesterday uh, my colleagues must have talked to you on what are the steps involved in any project and please remember these are the sequential steps sequential meaning they follow a particular pattern but many a times many a times many a times these many a times these are not reflected in your overall performance why why it is not reflected in your overall performance because because many a times these organizations tend to have overlapping things for example you are at an execution state stage you realize oh, no, no, something was wrong in my initiation so you go back you go back and try to upgrade your initiation stage am i right kahan par aap ne is galti ko pakda aap ne is galti ko pakda jab aap execute karne lage the project oh my god i have done something wrong you know that is where you get hold of so friends although although you are doing your project at the execution stage but still you have realized that no there is something wrong here and same way many a times sir uh, uh, there there are large number of projects when the, the when, uh, where the project is at the final stage project is at the final stage and still you find out that yes i am not able to do this project so i wind up my project large number of cases their project is at the final stage and still you say you still stay no 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 yaar this is not my cup of tea 17 out of 20 every year britannia launches around 21 new biscuits 17 or 18 of them are withdrawn within first 3 weeks aap aur main sochenge bhai itna paisa lagaya all down the drain but please remember one or two which they succeed becomes a bubon or a mari or what so tracking reviewing and regulating the progress is very important why because only then you will be able to take a corrective action i hope i am clear on this 
Okay. So if I if I try to summarize my last 50 minutes, I will say every project passes through six phases. And all of them are related to your end goal. What is the end goal? Successful completion. And to successfully complete that project, you need to you need to initiate the project properly. Ration. What is the rationale? Rationale for the project. Ration. This is, is a French word. Raison d'être. Reason for existence. Reason for existence. What for I am here? Why for I am doing this project? So, evaluating a project has to start with the basic concept why we initiated, what have we done, what are we doing, what are we planning to do. There are five W's of any project. Why are we doing it? What are we doing it? Who is doing it? Where it is being done? And although it is not W, but it sounds W, how are we doing it? These are the five W's of project management. I thank Professor Sunilji for giving me uh, this opportunity. Actually, I am very much. Uh, uh, mesmerized with the project management. I've been doing this for now almost 32 years. I've been teaching this paper. Uh, so I enjoy teaching this paper because this gives me my hands-on experience to, to, to share my whatever little knowledge I have. Okay. So every project needs to focus on these five W's. Rational. Is it to earn money only? Is it to do something for the society? Is it to do something for the nation? Now, look at, look at the last 10 years, especially last 7, 8 years. Even in the year 22, 23, India is considered to be the second fastest growing economy. Most of the, most of the Business magazines say India is the fastest growing economy at 7.6%. Because we don't know what, what China is doing. They are capable of giving any figures. <clears throat> so, is it not a good indicator of how resilient we are? On 20th of March 2020, lockdown, day one, we had zero masks in the country. We had zero PPE kits. And by 15th of June, less than three months, 87 days, we became the largest exporter of PPE kits in the world. 2.5 lakh kits we used to export per day. Is it a small achievement? We reached a stage where we could manufacture almost 7 crore masks per day. That is the resilience you have in the system. We have crossed 200 crores of the dosage COVID vaccination, 2.5, uh, 250 crores now. Within 11 months flat, we could vaccinate whole of our population.
एंड प्लीज रिमेंबर प्लीज रिमेंबर अवर पॉपुलेशन इज ऑलमोस्ट इक्वल एंड टू द कंबाइंड पॉपुलेशन ऑफ ऑलमोस्ट सेवेंटी कंट्रीज and they are struggling to vaccinate now that is what is the project management hats off to 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 our but we call it as corona warriors or whatever every each one of us we we teachers also did our bit right <coughs> i i don't know about others others are much more tech, tech savvy than me i had i had been using zoom when when i was delivering lectures to my students in france when long back but but most of us were not even using anything and within within one and a half months we all mastered google zoom you name the platform webex and we started interacting with our students अब इतना ज्यादा इन्वॉल्वमेंट हो गया दैट ऑल माय एफडीपीज़ आर आल्सो बीइंग कंडक्टेड बाय सुनील जी ऑनलाइन सेव्स टाइम सेव्स एनर्जी सेव्स मनी सो व्हेन एवर व्हेन एवर एनी प्रोजेक्ट इज टू बी इवेल्युएटेड फर्स्ट एंड फॉरमोस्ट इज व्हाई आर वी डूइंग इट गुजराती कहावत है मने सोचे मुझे क्या मिलेगा इससे बट व्हाई विल आई गेन व्हाट विल आई गेन आउट ऑफ इट i need to first find out the components of that involvement and a question what comes will i break my total project into parts pieces bits and pieces so that it becomes easier to evaluate Suppose in a particular project there are twenty stages. Overall project has failed. Should I blame all twenty stages, or should I try to find out in this step seventeen I went wrong? So whole of the project went bad because my step seventeen was not up to the mark. then a question comes who is going to implement it is it self or will i out source it will i out source it so choice is yours if it is a strategic important like for example there are in india also there are very few items which are on the banned list only on the government or its agencies can produce those products but most of the things are now on odl open general license let the market forces determine the way education now is also almost anybody is allowed to now even the uh, government has been very um, open to this concept of uh, inviting foreign universities also to come to india and set up their campuses let them compete yeah the best of best of indian company uh, institutions will succeed we may differ on on the methodology but all of us will agree on one thing that yes there is a need to improve quality of higher education in india and uh, institutions like nittr have a pivotal role to play in this and in such exercise such such training programs add value short term training programs they add value mm -hmm. then a question comes on where will we implement it where will we do it will we do it in x unit or will we do it in y unit or we will do it in z unit now here in comes the role of here in comes the role of the cost benefit analysis madam jeevan she highlighted zirakpur becoming a maddening crowd yes but please remember one thing please remember one thing that it has been able to provide accommodation yes
Do you understand? Yes, sir. So, now, <laughs> herein comes the, the question of ensuring balance equilibrium between the environment and the, the sustainability and the availability. Same problem is, 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 is the burning of the stubble. All of us agree that it's, it's not. But what are the options available to a farmer as on date? We need to evaluate it. And the last question is, how are we going to evaluate? Will we use certain monetary tools? Or will we use certain societal parameters? For example, a cigarette manufacturing company like ITC, Wills, They are, they are providing the service. People, some of us may need a cigarette. So they are providing us a cigarette. But is it in societal interest to produce cigarettes? It is giving them profits. It is giving them sufficient returns. Government is putting a lot of pressure not to manufacture it. But they can't. It's, it's a right of the person to consume in case they want to. So they put all those logos and all those banners to discourage people. But still... Why? Because at this moment, the monetary benefits override the societal parameters for some of the companies. Take the case of chewing gum or, or, or this uh, pra pan prags. It's not in society's interest, but products are available. So there is a very thin line of differentiating where consumer rights are there and where there is a societal norm. So friends, if you, I just recapitulate, these five W's will determine how the project is to be controlled. So all controlling techniques have to focus on these five W's. So if I go back to this PPT, why should I do it? What are the goals we want to? How will it be done? Who is doing it? And then in the final end, it's evaluation. So I have tried to summarize in through five W's, the various stages of project life cycle. Any questions, please? Any questions? Anybody has some comments? Okay, no. So, so in continuation of these five W's, Japanese gave a wonderful concept of five S. Uh, friends, three things are in, in project management, three things are there. Five W's, five S, and then seven S. If we understand these three, then I think we are fairly comfortable with the project management. <laughs> so I will now first introduce you to the Japanese concept of, yeah, yeah, Shelly, please. Yeah, yeah, please, you have raised your hand. Yes, please. Or is it by mistake? I think it's by. Okay, fine. It's okay. Any questions, Shelly, you have? Or... Okay. Now, Japanese, when they were trying to develop the Kaizen, what is the concept of Kaizen? Kaizen means uh, continuous improvement.
one as Kaizen, K A I. Maybe somebody would have introduced you to Kaizen. Continuous improvement. So, what is it? When they were trying to find out that how things can improve and how that improvement can be further improved and further improved, that is this continuous churning. Right? कभी आप दूध देखा दूध को बॉईल करो तो फैट आता है हम फैट को रिमूव कर देते हैं वी बॉईल इट अगेन फैट कम्स वी रिमूव इट फैट कम्स ऑन वी रिमूव इट दैट इज द टिपिकल सिमिली टू कंटीन्यूअस इंप्रूवमेंट एज यू गो अलोंग मोर एंड मोर एक्टिविटीज यू ट्राई टू इंप्रूव अपॉन एंड फॉर दैट दे हैव गिवन अ कांसेप्ट नोन एज 5s ऑल ऑल आर जापानीज वर्ड्स सो सो फॉर फॉर योर बेनिफिट आई एम आल्सो गिविंग यू देयर देयर first and foremost is before you initiate your work you must clear the space where you are producing the product so first and foremost is the concept of siri siri means clearing the area is a construction project you need to clear that area debris there may be there the old decade Uh, plants may be there hazardous tree may be there live wires may be there anything right you need to even even if there is a maintenance project your old cemented walls need to be brushed up need to be cleaned before you start the process and once you have cleaned that process your next stage comes that of organizing your activity organizing it. and for this they have given a word known as site organizing your resources and machine material money they call it as 4m 4m of men machine material and money you need to organize your resources because unless you have resources available to yourself right you cannot function unless you right then you need to divide your work into source you need to standardize the things you need to standardize known as cycas to Standardize so that you know at the end of the day your performance is up to the mark or not. And then there is Sitku. Sorry for uh, if I am not able to pronounce it. That is, all of us must perform our task independently and in team. See, I am using two words: independent as well as in teams. That means, मुझे अपने काम से मतलब रखना चाहिए इन केस आई एम स्टक अप समेर आई विल सीक दी हेल्प ऑफ समी दैट इज वट दे मीन बाई इंडिपेंडेंट एज वेल एज इन टीम्स एंड लास्ट वन क्लियरिंग ऑल योर प्रीवियस वर्क दैट इज साइसू सॉरी 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 So friends this is the 5s concept of continuous improvement as given by the japanese continuous project monitoring now allow me to show it in in your ppt is the ppt available is it clear Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. First is the sorting, mm -hmm. removing unnecessary items, and those which are needed, you keep it at a separate. The setting that means arranging all of them in in a particular sequence in which they are required. 
then shining, cleaning and keeping them clean so that somebody else uses it, it doesn't dirty his hand, doesn't waste time and energy to do that. Standardize the things, establish guidelines so that we all can work in tandem. And last is sustaining that act. See, if the activity is performed well, we will continue to do it again and again. Okay. So my first half, last PPT in this, then I will, uh, let's have five minutes break. So uh, in project control, first step is establishing your objectives, your goals. Then measure your performance. Compare your actual performance with standards. And then take your necessary action so that in case of any variation, we will be able to 